Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, Esther chapter 7, and today's title is Out of the Frying Pan, Into the Fryer, in Fire. Out of the Frying Pan and Into the Fire. I don't know if you ever heard that phrase before. If you haven't, you're going to definitely know what it means after today's chapter in the Bible. We're going to get into all that in just a moment. It's going to get, it's going to get interesting. But before we do that, as always, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast. Make sure you're asking us your questions, you're engaging with us. Make sure you're going to the Bible Breakdown discussion at uh, the Facebook group and just engage with this community. Man, the more we dig, the more we find it. That's how we grow is by doing it together. And I want to hear from you. So make sure that you're sending us the questions, but also I want to know how you relate to all this if you're watching on YouTube. And for some of you, I would love for you that if you do the podcast thing and you are always going to be my favorites, I don't even care. Make sure you go to YouTube and engage with some of the conversation. And I'd like to know for you, have you ever been in a moment when it seems like things went from bad to worse? And then what happened? I just love to hear your story because that's exactly what's going to happen. That's what the phrase means, out of the frying pan, into the fire. It's things go from bad to worse. And if you remember, while you're grabbing your Bible, to the, uh, Ephesians, <laughs> Esther chapter 7, Yesterday, we talked about how Mordecai was honored by Haman, which it's not a good thing, right? And Haman was just so embarrassed. And so he goes back to his house and he's like, what am I going to do? This is happening. And then it's just, just bad, 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 bad. Well, while he's complaining and his wife and advisors are kind of saying, hey, you need to let this thing go with the Jews because this is looking bad for you. At that moment, he is now summoned to the next dinner, Esther, and with King Xerxes. He doesn't know it yet. But it's about to go from bad to worse. And so let's read this together. And remember, the overall theme is God uses a mess to make something beautiful. So we're going to watch as God starts to turn everything to his direction. You ready? Esther chapter 7, verse 1 says this. So the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. On this second occasion, while they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, Tell me what you want, Queen Esther. What is your request? And I will give it to you, even if it is half the kingdom. Queen Esther replied, If I have found favor with the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my request, I ask for my life and for the life of my people and that they will be spared. For my people and I have been sold to those who would kill, slaughter, and annihilate us. And if we had merely been sold as slaves, I would remain quiet. But that would be too trivial a matter to warrant disturbing the king. Pause. Wow. Can you imagine? He's so happy about Esther. He's happy with what's going on. And all of a sudden, she just drops that bomb like that. Wow. So obviously, here's his response. Verse 5. Who would do such a thing, King Xerxes demanded? Who would be so presumptuous to touch you? Touch the queen, right? Esther replied. Can you imagine? Just like, like imagine in your mind, she looks at Haman and points at him. I don't know if she pointed, but we're going to act like she did. She pointed at him and said this in verse 6. This wicked Haman is our adversary and our enemy. She probably didn't stumble like I did. Let's try it again. This wicked Haman is our adversary and our enemy. Haman grew pale with fright before the king and queen, as you would. Verse 7. Then the king jumped to his feet in a rage and went out into the palace garden. Haman, however, stayed behind to plead for his life with Queen Esther, for he knew that the king intended to kill him. Listen, to this is so bad. It, verse 8, in despair, he fell on the couch where Queen Esther was reclining just as the king was returning from the palace garden. The king exclaimed, will you even assault the queen right here in the palace before my very eyes? And as soon as the king spoke, his attendants covered Haman's face, signaling his doom. Now pause. So imagine he is bending over toward Queen Esther, begging, but he walks, but the king walks back in at the worst possible moment. And it looks like he's trying to assault her. So it's like bad to worse to worst, 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 <laughs> the most worserest that it could ever be. Verse nine, then Harbana, one of the king's eunuchs said, you know, Haman has set up a sharpened pole that stands 75 feet tall in his own courtyard. He intends to use it to impel Mordecai. You know, the man who saved the king from assassination? 
such bad timing. Then impale Haman on it, the king ordered. So they impaled Haman on the pole he had set up for Mordecai, and the king's anger subsided. Wow. Haman's having a really, really, really bad day. So he gets up that morning, and he has to go honor his worst enemy. Then he goes to this banquet, and the whole thing turned on him, and he ends up dying. Well, what in the world can we get out of this? And that is this. God doesn't – He he's not going to give up on you. And when bad things happen, it doesn't mean that God's done working. Now, we're not looking from Haman's point of view, but look at Esther's point of view. God has given her this opportunity. And in the opportunity that he's given her, it's still not easy. She's still got to do her best. But when the timing is right, God's going to do what only God can do. Esther could have never made this happen on her own. She had to go stand before the king. Mordecai had to get reminded, or, or the king had to get reminded about Mordecai. So that when his name came up again, that meant something to him. Then. When he was already mad, the king comes back in and sees. I mean, all of these things had to work in place, and all of that had to work perfectly in order for this to happen. That doesn't happen. Only God could do that. And so I want to encourage you, when you're going through a difficult season, you're doing the very best you can. Whatever you do, don't stop. It's one thing to go into a dark valley. It's another thing to stop there and make your home there. When bad things happen, and when you're going through a trial, you're going through a storm, whatever you do, keep going. Because when you least expect it, God is going to take your ordinary and do something extraordinary. God's always doing more than you can realize. There's no idea. We have no idea what Esther hoped for. At the most, she probably just wanted Haman to have to stop doing what he was doing. But now, Haman could never bother her again. So can I encourage you? God's doing more than you realize. Do the best you can and trust God to do the rest. Because as the overall theme of this book is, God uses a mess to make something beautiful. And now, as you can see, the tide is starting to turn. And we're going to see in the next few chapters what God is going to do. It's going to be awesome. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today. Lord, I pray for maybe somebody who's listening or watching this. And they're doing the best they can, but it just seems impossible. We pray you would encourage them, God, to realize that we have no idea what you're capable of. You can do so many great things. You have a way of working things out that only you can. And I pray, God, that we will just do our best to take the next step and trust you to do the impossible. That all of our enemies' plans will go back on them and that, God, you will give us joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I mean, what God's word says in Esther 4, verse 14, if you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But who knows if perhaps you have been made queen for such time as this. Now is the time. You could have been born at any time in history, but you're alive right now, which means God has purpose for you now. So let's do something with it. You ready? I'll see you tomorrow for Esther chapter 4.